Iowa State beat up on North Carolina. They only won by two, but it was the, one of the most bizarre endings we have ever seen. And a clock operator is probably going to be fired after today. Here's why. Working the clock down. King with that high dribble. Takes to the rim. Goes glass and hits. Iowa State on top. And a timeout is called. Did he call it in time? No. But they'll check the clock. Yeah, right. Roy Williams was hunched over at that point. It's like he knew that they had. I mean, they needed to call the timeout right away or or run or just or, or, or shoot or, or shoot it from yeah. which I thought feet. they were going to do yeah, I would have called the I would have called the timeout and tried to run the play with 1.6 seconds to play. Um, but from from the yeah, back, okay. yeah, rather than that, because well, first of all, that was nothing as it turned out. That was an inbounds to a guy 10 feet away and a 75 yeah. foot jumper. So uh, I think you were better off at that regard. Interesting, also the decision that Greg Marshall made in Wichita State to call the timeout with 3.2 down two when it looked like they might be in better position to get a shot. But that said, they got a pretty good look at the end of that game yeah. after he drew up that play. Van Fleet took a pretty open three-pointer from the top I of the I thought game. early he was going to shoot it, but, you know, I'm, I'm, okay, with, <laughs> I'm okay with how it panned out. Yeah, he, and he did have it. a good look. He missed it. It yeah. was a hard shot, and he missed it. But, uh, but it seemed there was criticism that he shouldn't have called that timeout as it happens. They got a good look. Uh, can, you know, once you score with 1.6 seconds left, you, you need a, basically a miracle. And I think the officials sort of made the right decision there, even though you don't know when Roy Williams was exactly calling that mm -hmm. timeout. And maybe I thought they were going to say, like, Put the ball at three quarters court, and here's point six seconds, something like that. Yeah, but they, they, yeah. They, 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 I think, given all they had, that was a totally reasonable decision by the officials. Here's the other thing: the clock operator also screwed up when DeAndre Kane went down the court because the clock started late there too. I don't know if you saw this, but I didn't the clock that. started late on that one as well. So there no, could really? have been even more time. By the uh, time North Carolina had the ball, there could right. have been two seconds. Uh, well, there would have been a little less more. time if he started the clock late. That means Kane would have scored with even fewer seconds to play. No, I'm just saying because, because mm. he started, the clock operator started the clock late once again. Mm. Then it probably, it could have panned out differently. Well, let's also give a, 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 I thought it was a really nice moment. The referees are explaining to Roy Williams that the tournament run is over. And he just turned and shook Fred Hoiberg and gave him a hug and like it was that was nice that was a that was that was a rare moment of real sort of sports class where Williams was like, yeah, look, no matter what they decide here, we're not winning. <laughs> yeah. And we just let we literally let Iowa State score on like I don't know nine straight possessions Something at the like end of that. the game. Although North Carolina scored on nearly every possession, I had the under in that game. It's a great game to have the under in, although it was 159 and a half. Trials even, and tribulations. Even with that scoring spree, they still only went over by, what, eight, eight nine points what in was that the game. 160, basically. Ah, okay. um, but they just, those teams, they just score. And I'm so sorry. I picked Iowa State to go to the Final Four. You did? Yeah. It's and looking good now. No, I don't think so, because he's out. I mean, they lost, what's his name? George Jack, Niang. Yeah, Jet Niang. But he, like, so, you know, and, and you, you, you lose a player, there's that one moment of where you, a key player, really your second best or second best player, there's that moment where you band together sure. and play well for one game, but winning, winning a string of games without, without him is going to be hard. And obviously he's like seven feet tall. So and he's so skilled. He, he's, he's tall, he's skilled, but then again, North Carolina lost Bryce Johnson who's their third leading scorer within like the first few minutes of the game. Yeah, yeah, no, so it's sort of evened out. No, it evened out. I'm just saying I don't think Iowa State can go on the run that I, because they had everything. They had the. And that, now they play UConn, who I think they could beat. Even though beat, it's in New York, they, I think they could beat them. They can beat UConn, but it's tough. You lose a key player, you're, you know, and, and, and UConn counteracts the one thing that Iowa, the advantage that Iowa State has over most people. Although North Carolina has a sensational point guard in, in Marcus Page. But DeAndre Kane is a game-changing point guard. Totally, had 24 points. And he's just phenomenal. He made the last two buckets, one of them on the after the steal. But that drive was just, it's great. But North mm -hmm. Carolina doesn't play any defense. It's, you know, and, and that's tough, man. They just don't stop people. But, but Shabazz Napier is, is, is also a phenomenal point guard, and that'll be a great and matchup. And Wright is also a great player for UConn. So it'll be a good game. It'll be an interesting game.